It was in COVID, had my first panic attack. They say, hey, you have panic disorder. Do you have a panic plan? If you have a panic attack, what's the plan? Well, I've got a pre-plan. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here. Tell me how you heard about me and Amon Clinics. Yeah, so me, it was in COVID and um, I had just had my first panic attack actually. And uh, I'm going to the hospital and I'm not knowing what to call it. And finally, after six months, they say, hey, you have panic disorder, which is every day trying not to have a panic attack and scrolling on social media. And I see a Justin Bieber seasons documentary and uh, me and my friend watched it and you came up. And it was some clip that said, hey, he got misdiagnosed with this, but really we looked at his brain and it said this. And it was in that moment, I almost knew, I was like one day, Lord, one day I would love to sit across from him. Um, and then I told you a little bit off camera, but my wife and I started praying for you specifically the last six months and um, just have been watching your videos. And here I am today in front of you. So I'm blessed to be here. Well, we're blessed to have you, to help you. Yes, sir. Um, when did the panic attack start? Yeah, so the first one, um, I was on multiple different drugs. And so I was on uppers, downers, Xanax. Uh, I was drinking, smoking weed. And I didn't know what it was. I thought I was having a heart attack. And so I remember I was just, uh, my friends had left and I'm sitting there at my apartment and the thunder beat started. And then my brain was going, this is it, you're about to die. And so what I was thinking, okay, the drugs, I'm, I'm getting off it. And so the first time I had a sober panic attack, uh, I was in the car driving from Louisiana to Dallas. And all of a sudden I'm looking out the window, didn't feel stressed or anything, boom, boom. And then it went. And my brain said, heart attack, stroke, you're dying. And I went to the emer emergency room and I was there six hours and they kind of just said, hey buddy, you're, you're anxious. And I did not know and what that led to was eight to 10 months of a panic attack every single day to the point I could not leave my house. And that was probably in 2020, that year as COVID was hitting. That was an anxious year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, tell me about your life. Yeah, totally. Um, middle child, older brother, younger sister, mm -hmm. great parents, Dallas, Texas. Part of my background is my dad uh, was born and was homeless with his mom, alcoholic, abusive dad, um, ended up becoming ultra successful in a business. And he went from homeless to billionaire. And so I was born into a billionaire's family. I didn't know what to do with that um, because I thought the things that I was doing at a young age was just normal. As I got older, um, I felt like ashamed or something like, hey, that's not, that's not me. I promise I have value too. But it's hard to be raised by an ultra successful father. That's hard because yeah. it's like, who am I? Yeah. So my dad, um, his parents immigrated, very poor growing up. He went to work when he was 12 and ended up starting a grocery chain and ended up to being the chairman of the board of a $4 billion company. And I always remember as a child, I can never live up. Be that. Totally. And then I realized I didn't have to live up. Yep. I had to do what I wanted to. Totally, totally. Um, I was raised in a Christian family, but I think at a young age, because of that wealth, I was like, God, I don't need you. And so 2019 to 2020, I'm finishing up college in Dallas at SMU. Um, and I give my life to Christ in 2018. And that is where my life began to shift. I mean, it was a big shift. As I'm in this process, you hear about peace and joy. I'm experiencing it. And then I have a panic attack. And it's like my world comes crashing down. And what we just talked about was after all those panic attacks, panic disorder, I remember being in my closet and I was like, God, I thought I went all in with you. Like what happened? 
And it's been a journey for the last four years. And I've come a long way. But that 2020 to 2021, 22 was really hard years of um, coming out of this constant panic, fear, anxious place. Um, And how did you do that? What kind of help did you get? Yeah, so I went to um, a therapist and we started to do uh, CBT, it's cognitive behavioral therapy. And he was teaching me all these things, breathing techniques, and it was really helping. I went through a workbook, the mindfulness and acceptance workbook, really helpful. Um, and that helped a lot. He put me on, I didn't go on medicine, but clonazepam. Um, That's medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Me- yeah. So I did. It wasn't, um, it was like as needed. Uh-huh. Um, and it helped. But what I say, the, the biggest thing that has helped is, is prayer and meditation and just breathing. And so I'll wake up in the mornings and I'll spend an hour breathing and setting my mind. Um, yeah, just like focusing my mind. So, but I would not say that I'm out of it totally. Every time I get on a plane, sit next to Maddie and I'm like, hold me. Okay. We got it. Cause I've had a panic attack on a plane with her and where my legs are shaking and, um, all that fear still tries to raise its head at me. And so it's been a long process. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy to be I'm here. I'm so happy you're here. All things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Yeah. Right? Amen. So your pain, by sharing it, will help so many people. Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. So um, I read your history. I've looked at your scans. I've looked at your testing. So I, um, your goal is to get a better handle on these panic attacks Mm -hmm. and to have the healthiest brain possible. Let's look at his brain. Yes. So we do a study called SPECT and SPECT looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how your brain works and it basically shows us three things. Good activity, too little, or too much. Hmm. And then my job is to balance it. So here is an example of a healthy brain. Um, Here, we're looking at the outside surface. Here, we're looking at the most active parts of your brain. So blue is average activity. Red is the top 15%. White's the top 8%. So white's like the super active parts of the brain, which should be in the cerebellum. I wonder if that's not true for you. Um, okay. When we look at your brain. Oh, no. So let's just start with, for what you've done to your brain, you have a beautiful brain. So um, if I would have gotten this before you stopped using drugs, this would be much more shriveled. Mm. Right? And that's the real reason not to use drugs is they damage your brain. If they damage your brain, they damage your life. Mm. So... Um, your left temporal lobe could be healthier. You see this hole? Yeah. You don't have holes in your brain. Okay. But it's less active than it should be. Um, but other than that, looking at mm-hmm. this, I'm like, you have a really good looking brain. Great. What's going on is your emotional brain works too hard. So there's a part of your brain called the medial thalamus. She's right in the middle, is very busy. Hmm. And I think that's the sensitivity you had when you were a child. Yeah. And But your cerebellum's sleepy. What kind of exercise do you do now? I do elliptical uh-huh. um, and I weight lift, okay. but not as much, two to, two to three times a week. So I want you to add coordination exercise. I want you to start playing a racket sport. Okay. Tennis, my favorite's table tennis, okay. pickleball, because I want to activate this and it will actually help the rest of your brain be healthy. Okay. And then I'm going to put you on something called happy saffron to calm your emotional brain hmm. a little bit. And um, theanine gummies for when you think you get anxious. There's so many supplement alternatives that why in God's name people go to Xanax or Clonopin first. Right. That's insanity. 
Really? Right, because they're addictive. Totally. Once you start them, it's hard to get off, get off of them. The fact you were able to get off of them, good for you. Totally, right? totally. But let's, let's do it in a much more effective, less toxic way. But what I want you to hear, my emotional brain is busy, but I have a really healthy brain. Yeah. Right. And I can tell if you're going to get demented like decades before that happens. Mm. And I can often tell when people are in their 20s. And that's not what I'm seeing for you. Praise the Lord. So when um, you see that emotional firing, what is that? Uh, what do you think that's doing to me? Or why is that happening? I think it's driving. Well, why? You had a lot of negative thoughts since you were a child. Hmm. Right. It wasn't new. So our goal ultimately would be to keep your surface brain, the other one, healthy, calm this and activate that. Yeah. So if I scanned you again in four months or six months, we'd see your brain is better balanced. OK. And that's why I'm here. Yeah. Is I, I've made a lot of progress, but I want to be the healthiest I can be. And do you have a panic plan? If you have a panic attack, what's the plan? Well, I've got a pre-plan, and it's been a long time since I've gone over the verge. The breathing techniques um, is really all that I have, but, it, but it's been a long time since I've had one. But I'm not immune, I don't think, and so what would my plan be? Let's imagine a plane, and you have a panic attack. Don't. Doc, don't take me back there. <laughs> Number one, don't leave. It's really important. Stay. Suck it up. Yeah. Don't leave. Yeah. Or you have a panic attack and you're about to speak. Yeah. You have to speak. You have to just tell yourself, I have to speak. I'm going to do it. Um, I was on CNN, 1989. I wrote an article in Parade Magazine called How to Get Out of Your Own Way. I had 10,000 letters to our office when they actually wrote letters. Wow. And... Um, so CNN heard about it. I had on, I'm in the green room waiting to go on. And I have a panic attack and I'm like, I have to leave. And then the voice in my head starts laughing at me and goes, you treat people that have this problem. <laughs> what do you tell them to do? Totally. Don't leave. <laughs> Number two, breathe. And do they teach you, tell me when you breathe, how you do that. What's the pattern? It's the simple four or five through the nose, and then I'll hold for four out through the mouth for eight. Good. I love it. Okay. Twice as long to breathe out as you breathe in. And then part of your ministry has helped people get their minds right. Totally. And it's okay to tell your story. Totally. Right. I mean, we're telling your story. That's what I wanted to do. Um, yeah. It's like there was some, um, I think there was some shame on like, and I, this could be a lot longer question, but just like, should I go on medicine? Should I not? And, that, and when you're in ministry, it just felt like a whole different question. It's like, I don't know why I felt shame, but there is like a shame ab about that question. Because it's not brain health. Hmm. It's because it's your mind and you can't control it and you should be able to, right? But if we saw it as brain health, it's like, oh, my brain got attached to the issue of anxiety, probably had something to drug abuse and yeah. anesthesia. I mean, it's complicated, totally, right? Totally. It's complicated. Yeah. And I need to forgive myself. Hmm. And I'm going to work to be better. And then I'll teach other people to be better too. Yeah. So there's no shame in that. And it's like the brain is an organ, just like your heart is an organ. Yeah. Now, I think with you, we can do it with supplements. And okay. Why not? But if not, there's no shame totally. in just trying to balance your brain so you can have the life you want. Mm -hmm. It's great. <laughs>